Hello and welcome again. Today I want to talk to you about this little piece right here. This is a reproduction of 1763 Charlottesville uh, made by Navy Arms and I believe this one is actually manufactured by Petter Soli and imported under the Navy Arms brand. But uh, I've owned this little gun for about 15 years and just to give a little history on it, first I want to show you on the length. As you can see, that is not a normal 1763 Charlottesville length. Let me get back here and get her sister. This is a Dixie Gunworks made by Moroku. And you can see there's a much larger length difference. So the backstory on this little gun right here, I was looking on the internet back at about, I want to say 2006, back when you could still go on forums and buy guns and nobody had a cow or anything. So anyway, guy had posted this one and I was looking at the time, I was working on doing a mounted militia impression. So I'd bought a saddle and, that I was trying to modify to more of an, an English saddle, modifying it to an 18th century look and I wanted a shorter gun carbine. I was looking at carbine, and this one came up on, online, so I purchased it, ordered it, had it sent to me. And at the time, my son was 16 years old, and I had bought a little canoe gun, actually a week after this, for him. So, this one came in the mail first. And as soon as it gets home, he happens to be getting off the school bus when I'm starting to open the box, and he walks in. Hey, Dad, is that my gun? And I'm like, no. I said, I don't think so. So I open it up, and it became his gun. Long story short, two weeks later, we ran, uh, we were doing a small private shooting event down in Georgia, and out of the, I want to say, 10 or 15 entries in the event he came in fifth with this gun but the first five targets he hit all five targets which some of the guys even with rifles had not even hit but back to this this gun when i contacted the guy about it he was telling me that he had wanted a brush gun for deer hunting so he chopped 14 inches off the barrel so it's got a 30 inch barrel so i'm thinking yes this will be great i'll put a a uh bar on the side with a saddle ring for a sling, make it a sling, to, you know, like a cut down Charlottesville used as a carbine, which is something that they actually did during the American Revolution. Due to the shortage of arms, they, they cut some full-size muskets down to carbine like to make them easier to uh, load, mount it. But anyway, uh, one thing he did, see if I can get this in here, if you look here on the, the uh, middle band, there's a, trade, a set of trade sights braced on here and the nose band. Now when the, he cut this down, and I don't know if he did it or if he had a gunsmith do it, I don't know. They did a pretty good job though. When they cut it down, let me get the sister up here again. And you look at this, you have your front nose band the middle nose band where the sling goes and then your your rear band and what these do is just hold the barrel in place so what they actually did was move the front nose band because you can tell it's got the two pieces here for the ramrod they moved it to the second uh, band slot and put the sling swivel on it. So the sling swivel is still actually in about the same spot it's supposed to be. So anyway, like I said, we've taken this gun out and shot it a few times. I will get more into the development of French muskets and stuff at a later time. I'm planning on doing a longer video with my reproduction. I have a 1717, a 1728 and these two 1763 French infantry muskets. And I also have several brown vessels and want to do 
because I have done in the past lectures on firearms, muskets of the American Revolution, and I figure I will do that in video format, put it on YouTube. But that'll come at a later date. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about this little gun because I used it in the last video. Oh, and if you watched my last video, the gun that I purchased, that I purchased used, that had a charge in the bore, it was this one right here. When I pinged the ramrod on it, it thudded and I took it home and immediately filled it with water in case the powder was still active. The story on that gun, the guy I bought it from, had bought it from a friend that needed some money and who was an older, the person I bought it from was an older reenactor and this was one of his older friends. <clears throat> but anyway, before he got the gun, and I don't know how long he had had it, maybe up to a year, two years, I don't know, before he decided to pass it on, the person he bought it from had it sitting in a closet for 10 years. So I poured water down the bore, I took a worm, pulled out a bunch of old paper wadding, and there was a gunpowder charge in there. I had to flush it out really, just like this one. That's one of the things, one of the reasons I want to talk about, the reason I use this one so much, if I'm doing stuff indoors with this shorter barrel, makes this really handy for like pinging the ramrod and stuff. If you've got low ceilings, you're not hitting ceilings, stuff like that. But anyway, that's the story on this gun. It was actually cut down and used as a hunting gun. Uh, the fellow that I bought it from claimed he killed nine deer with it. I believe him. I mean, I'm not saying he didn't. I'm just saying that's the story that was told to me. The thing is quite accurate. 50 yards of paper plate, you can hit, uh, I can put four or five shots in a row in a, in a nine inch circle at 50 yards, which for me, you know, where we're located here, most of your shots at deer are way under 50 yards. But anyway, so that's what I just kind of like I said, I wanted to do a little brief talk on this, this firearm. Uh, and I have some old video clips where me and my friend Tony took this out to his farm and shot some live rounds to it. And that will be following here in just a second. Thank you.